I never got to see people who looked like me anywhere <laughs> in media. And seeing people like me on the internet just being happy and joyful and loving themselves was such a radical act. And I realized that I can give a platform to others who need that. All right, we're back with another episode of Creator Generation this week. It's just Phoebe and Ant, and we are joined by Emma Scriver. Well, she's, I don't know, she's everything on a lot of things. She does a lot of, yes. she's a creator, she has got a podcast, she's a writer, a journalist, she's... I don't know, just bloody interesting and brilliant. Yeah. She popped onto the Creator Generation <laughs> Discord. We saw what she did and we wanted to get her on. And so, Emma, you can do a much better introduction than that. So, please. <laughs> I loved that intro. It was it was amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, I when I think about myself, I'm kind of like a creator multi-hyphenate, if you will. Um, I am a freelance journalist I am a body image advocate. I am a social strategist. That's my uh, full-time job. <laughs> and yeah, I also have a podcast. And I am hoping that when we take a hiatus from the podcast, which is probably in less than a month, um, I am doing some research to try and launch a YouTube and Twitch as well. So, awesome. you know, just all around full-time creative um that's that's me in a nutshell amazing and shout out to the podcast it's it's called yeah. high lowbrow so you'll want to check that yeah. out so like what's the quick one liner on on the pod uh high lowbrow the the one liner on high lowbrow is we're giving you highbrow takes on lowbrow culture and basically <laughs> what what that is supposed to be awesome. is uh, is because most of the time people you know speak ill of things in yeah. pop culture so like reality television or you know just actually recently our episode that we recorded yesterday was about memes or we did an episode this season about things that teen girls like and so basically what high lowbrow is is making a case doing a deep dive into the things that people kind of look down on and yep. trying to make a case for why people should just like things very cool i like that a lot <laughs> yeah emma like you, you mentioned you're a um Body image advocate, is that right? Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Posi positive. You got yeah. it. You got it. Yeah. You nailed and it. You got it right. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we kind of want to lean into that today, but just to sort of like so people get a bit more of a flavor about you. Like I was uh, reading your bio on your on your mm -hmm. website the other day, and um, you've just to sort of give you a shape. You've got this line about uh, about yourself, and it's like many have come to know me as being fat, loud, and shouty on the internet with opinion on just about <laughs> everything. Um, and mm. you've written for like, you know, Refinery29 and um, Toronto Star and, and like Washington Post and stuff like that. And, and a lot of that has been around um, body image and body image issues, particularly in social media and like content creating. And like, what, why is that something that you're so interested and passionate about, but also like actually taking steps to, to, surface to the world i guess those issues big question yeah Sorry. i mean <laughs> it's a big question um so i can't lay claim to uh, being the person who started body positivity or fat activism or any of these things but for me um i got started in the body positivity world back in 2015 if i'm timelining correctly in my brain <laughs> and way back when i used to have a blog called fat girl food squad uh, and it was about the intersections between food fat and feminism and the blog when it originally started we had writers from all across canada and the u.s and it blew up 
so quickly because in back in 2015 it was really when the body positive uh, body positivity movement was really taking off um so back then i think people were really finding the language and terms about why yeah. it was important to be in their bodies and also yeah. related to that um the media had always put out such negative uh, connotations. Is that the right word we should use? But the media had had all of these advertisements and, you know, news articles and uh, even social media at the time was always quite uh, negative in how they approached how what specific bodies could be on television or in media or in yeah. advertisements. And it was the first time that people were kind of being radical about, quote unquote, radical, <laughs> about how they showed up. Uh, so, I mean, Tumblr and Live Journal were some of the first places that I got to see fat bodies online and just unapologetically loving themselves and unapologetically being themselves. And it really reminded me, like me, I'm only a size 18, size 20. I mean, I fluctuate in my sizing and my weight, but me, I never got to see people who looked like me mm -hmm. anywhere <laughs> in media yeah. or online. And seeing people like me on the internet just being happy and joyful and loving themselves yeah. was such a radical act and so, like, bananas that yeah. it changed the way I wanted to move through the world. So yeah. <laughs> I think... That was one of the reasons why we started Fat Girl Food Squad to bring together other rad fatties to be like, hello, we can do this too. Let's take over the world. Uh, and we did for a period of time. <laughs> and um, But it, it, it was important for me to sort of like, when Fat Girl Food Squad stopped being a thing, it was important for me to also carry on that message uh, and to continue doing that work, um, I don't consider myself an activist because activism work is so hard and so like I, I, I it's it's a lot. Um, but I know that I have a platform through all, like through social media, through my podcast, through my journalism work, through all of the work that I do. And I realize that I can give um, a platform to others who need that. Mm -hmm. And so if I can amplify those voices, then absolutely that's what I want to do. Oh, I absolutely love that. <laughs> yeah. It reminded me, when you were talking, it reminded me of a story. My husband and I were walking through an airport and there was a photo of um, Kaya Gerber, Kaya Gerber. Mm -hmm. And it was many, many, it was yeah. many years ago. She was very, very young. And uh, she was uh, you know, in a modeling thing. There's this really seductive looking photo. And my husband looked at it and he said, oh, she's beautiful. And I said, you know, she's like a 15 year old girl. And he was like, mm -hmm. what? And I was like, that's the beauty standard for, for fully grown women. It is a, the body of a 15 year old girl and it is crushing. As you know, it's impossible to live up to and it does terrible things to your soul. It makes you feel so bad about yourself. So I love, I love people like you, Emma. <laughs> I love people like you just, being so open and honest and bold and just bringing so much joy and comfort to the world. So it's such a powerful thing. Um, and I'm a creator too, and I, and I know the impact that this has on me, but I would love to hear from you, you know, these kinds of things. What, what does this conventional beauty do to creators? What impact is it having on our community? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think a lot is, I think back to like 2015 to now, and I'm like, oh, am I dating myself? <laughs> but I think about 2015 to now, and I'm like, I feel like so much has changed, and yet not a lot has changed. Yeah. So, um, you know, I actually wrote a piece for Greatest about how uh, 
because so many brands and so many, um, you know, so many individuals are like photoshopping is actually, you know, being such a huge, it's changing the way we look at our faces. And I actually wrote an opinion piece being like, it's not Photoshop that's actually <laughs> uh, ruining us. It's uh, It goes way deeper than all of that. And it's about, yeah. we need to have a conversation about media literacy. And we mm-hmm. need to have a conversation about, you know, what kids but also as adults we need to have a conversation about what we're actually seeing online and what we're seeing in advertisements because photoshop or not you know you can still be plagued with like uh body dysmorphia you know Mm -hmm. take for example individuals who suffer uh who are not suffer but individuals who are dealing with um who are trying to figure out their own gender identity and are going through that that has nothing to do with like what you're seeing in advertisements that has nothing to do with photoshop that has everything to do with like trying to figure out who you are as an individual and i think so often we kind of you know lean so heavily on oh but (laughs) what about the photoshop (laughs) what about you know um beauty standards and it's like well there are healthy ways to you know sometimes I want to apply a red lipstick and that makes me feel better when I look at myself in the mirror Um, and that's a mood booster and that shouldn't be taking away from how you feel at the end of the day Uh, and there's also this demonization sometimes about food for an example so like you know, if you have an ice cream, does that mean that you're going to like <laughs> spoil everything that you've ever had? So I think yeah. it's it's about more about education, media literacy, and making sure individuals have that sort of knowledge and power mm-hmm. and they feel like they can know what they're doing i mean i'm not i'm not sitting here saying western beauty standards are so great because clearly they're not and they've done so much tox toxicity and harm to so many people but what i'm saying is it's not a um it's not a it's not a a, an easy issue to be solved yeah Mm -hmm. I, i mean i think maybe we're all aligned here and that we think there's issues right like Mm deep-seated issues and it's not like you know as you say like photoshop being it's just a tool it's not a it you know it's not a it's not the driver of all these things but like maybe we should take a step back and like just a helicopter view what are like what are some of the issues that we're sort of seeing with you know um like the idea of conventional beauty or but you know negative body image positive body image like what's maybe just the over like some of the issues from a, you know, big picture point of view? Yeah, I think every individual is sort of different in in what they may be struggling with. And so it's hard to say, right? Because what my issues may be may be different from, you know, Aunt, what your issues are, which may be different from Phoebe, what your issues are. And I think when we sort of... For example, you know, some people have come to me and say, I have a really hard time, like, even just looking in the mirror. It's difficult for me to sort of, like, uh, you know, when I walk by a mirror, I can't really look at myself because I see the full view of my body. Um, You know, like, that's hard. And sometimes you have to, like, build up the confidence to even be able to do that. I know other individuals that I know they don't like having photos taken of themselves because then they will have to see that reflected for all time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think really it's it's a case by case and individual by individual basis. Um, but th- those are all things that you have to work through and those are all things like I think one great example as well is um, Sachi Cole in her book that she wrote 
Uh, she wrote about how growing up as a brown woman, she one of the biggest things growing up in Canada was that she wanted to have lighter skin, but she also was super hairy. And she never wanted to have all of that hair on her body because white women didn't have that. So I think, you know, my struggles as a fat woman being white are completely different than what her struggles are as a brown woman. And I think we have to recognize that, like, each individual person are going to have different things. And it's how you sort of navigate those and yeah. I find most of the time uh, one of the things that I really loved in Sachi's book is as she got older she f- kind of fell in love with like one her skin but also too she was like I'm a very proud Indian woman and my my hair is something that I am like so like in love with because it's a part of my heritage wow love's more powerful than hate huh (laughs) (laughs) and it's like for me too it's like a big reason part of my body image journey was I did so many different um they were called like body love classes uh and every time I've told people about these they were like I can't believe you did this but they were different classes uh, that I signed up for or workshops where I would go into a room with like 20 or 30 people and you get naked and Stop then it. you <laughs> and, Wait, and then you just would Japanese onsen and just strip nerd <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you would kind of like talk about your body so like I love, you know, this part of my body because of X, Y, Z reason. I really hate this part of my body because of X, Y, Z. And you would have these like really complicated and difficult conversations. But the great thing about it is you're in a room with like 20 or 30 other people and you hear that like everybody feels the exact same way. And yeah. nobody is perfect. So it kind of yeah. gives your brain this mental check of like, oh, yeah. everybody hates their bodies. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> hey, just a quick interruption. We have the Creator Generation Discord community. Join your fellow creators from all over the world. We are here to help you grow, thrive, succeed, help each other be accountable and get it done. So hit the link, join us in the Discord. I look forward to seeing you there. You know, I go on from, from so I work as a travel creator and I go on a lot yeah. of like um, like travel trips with other creators. And it's interesting what you see, like you see these people online and then you see behind the scenes and it's often very sad. Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of situations of people ordering a lot of food at restaurants and they get the photo mm-hmm. with all the food in front of them. They maybe take one bite and that's it. And it's this high functioning eating disorder behind the scenes that's unfolding to get the perfect photo. And, and I get it, I get the pressure, I totally get it. But that's mm-hmm. the reality of what's happening. And I know myself, I, you know, I can be scrolling through TikTok some days and I'm seeing all of these bodies coming at me and I have to remind myself and go, that is most likely a 15 or 16 year old girl, <laughs> you know, and she looks beautiful, but I'm a 34 year old lady. Like I'm in a different phase of my life. And everyone's body is different. And sometimes you just have to put the phone down for a while and get away from it because it starts to drag you down. Hey. Yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost 40. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that is also another thing that I'm reconciling with is that yeah, I've, been doing, I've been doing um, this for a while now. And for me personally, it's so important to one – Like, I've been doing the work on myself, and when I tell others, I'm like, yeah, um, this hasn't been done overnight, one. And two, I've also had, like, years of therapy layered in with that. So, um, 
don't just think that yeah. like it's going to happen in a day or in a week or in a month. It's like, no, 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 no. Like you got to continue working on yes. it. And yes. then you probably have to work with like a therapist. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a therapist. So I can tell you like, hey, this is what's happening in our garbage fire world. And these are some steps that you can try and take towards making things better for you and your people around you. But also then maybe like source out a professional to help you um, because I am not that. So what are some of the steps that you would recommend to people? <laughs> um, for me and for others, I think curating your social media, kind of like yeah. you said when you were like, yeah. sometimes I just have to step away, uh, yeah. is such an important tool. So um, even during the pandemic, it became so, so, so important as mm-hmm. well. Um I know a lot of people think that they need, like, I need to follow the celebrity. I need to follow the, no, no, just follow the people that bring you joy and the people who make you feel happy, confident, inspired, all of those things. Because honestly, if you're going onto the internet every day and it's just making you sad or mad or frustrated or whatever, no, just, just, that's not the vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing too is, and this is again, just, just a me thing, but I think it, I suggest this to everyone is to read. <laughs> I know that's a very like, <laughs> but yeah. uh, reading up about any of the things that you want to know more about is such so it could be about fat activism it could be about body image it could be about you know any sort of topic in mind and it could be with other creators it could be you know pieces that i've written on the internet it could be (laughs) books but there is such a plethora of content out there and if you are unsure of where to start there's so many good people putting the content out there that you don't have to be afraid yeah. to know how or where to start. And you don't have to be afraid to, you know, oh, um, you know, I don't know what the difference is between fat activism and body positivity and body neutrality. Like, what what is the difference? Don't worry. There is an explainer out there for you. Someone's got you. <laughs> so... I think it's important to just know that, like, you are not alone. Yes. The internet is here to hold your hand. <laughs> and yeah. um, I feel like sometimes we are too afraid to ask questions. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And it, don't be afraid to ask questions. We're human. Yeah. We're going to fuck up. <laughs> Get to reading. Well, I, I- <laughs> I think, and we can answer, we can help with the the second part by just, we'll just leave everything that you've written. um, And then then people can go down the rabbit hole beyond that. Um, Yeah. And then the the, the first part of like curating your your social media, um, Mm. like two parts to that is one, I'd love to, you know, just hear you share some of those creators. Like, you know, you can name check them. But then, like, then the, the flip side, the second part of that is like, like, some people, a lot of people use social media as like a, a window to another world and escapism and, and like they look at these people doing amazing things and having lives that um, are atta- unattainable for 99.9% of the population. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to sort of dive into that, but maybe I, I shouldn't have asked two questions at once. Um, <laughs> Amber, as a I'll journalist, she'd be slapping me, slapping me over the... the <laughs> knuckles with a ruler for that one so yeah but maybe let's talk let's talk like yeah you know yeah positive creators that are that yep. you you like to follow that um you can make some yeah so in terms of creators that i really like to follow um i have to give a shout out to some of my canadian folks so there's tons of blush uh sarah from toronto uh, incredible and amazing. Uh, they also have a YouTube channel. Um, and then there is Sonara, and she is also a books publicist, but she is the 
uh, creator of toddler grandma style. Uh, so she does a lot of like maximalist fashion, plus size fashion. Um, I feel like I'm going to have to send all of these <laughs> links over yeah, afterwards. Totally. I'm, I'm, writing um, them down. I'm writing them down. Yeah, but <laughs> if you if you even just Google toddler grandma style, she's got great yellow hair awesome. and amazing maximalist fashion style. I'm just like, love it. Uh, and then for my folks in the U.S., uh, Marie Denis, who runs the Curvy, Curvy Fashionista, is like incredible and amazing. Um, she has been an icon, legend of the plus size fashion community for like years and years and years. Uh, and I would be remiss if I forgot uh, Nicolette Mason and Gabby Fresh, who were like two of the first individuals that I first started following when I entered like 2015 body positivity community. I think I first started following them in like Tumblr live journal days. So I remember <laughs> when they first dropped their like prem fashion line, I like ordered it on the first day and their like site crashed. They're incredible and amazing. <laughs> Um, I could probably keep going, but then we will be here for another hour. <laughs> but I should also say there are some really awesome creators on TikTok right now. And what is really, I like, I'm obsessed with TikTok. And what yeah, has really too. warmed my heart is that seeing Gen Z um, sort of take what was like the body positivity and fat activism movement of like, previous years and translate it over to what is now into TikTok style and make it yeah. all of their own. And now they're starting like Discord communities and Twitch and all of these things. And I'm like, yes, I love this. Go out and get it. Do you? I'm like so in like I feel like an old, old lady <laughs> that's just like, yes, I'm thriving <laughs> off of all of your youthdom, please. <laughs> Um, so I, I love watching all of this, uh, I, there's Jude Mermaid Royal. She had a Twitch channel and, um, she was also on YouTube for a period of time. I don't know if her YouTube channel is back. Incredible and amazing creator. Love them. There's, there's just so many what people. We'll, do is we'll get this list <laughs> and we'll get yeah, we'll... Amma's go-to Clean your clean your feed with and cleanse your brain with. with Trust this me, list. I got like, so many. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> and then the the second part of the question, which was well, like, like yeah, obviously the sense of escapism of social media, and like that, that that's part of also we get to see like a window into all these um, weird and wonderful lives by like, mm-hmm. of all sp- spectrums. But a lot of the time, there's that sort of inspirational, aspirational, well, inverted commas, traditionally mm-hmm. of of people like. Can you follow those and still have like a healthy relationship with social media? And like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I think it's uh, complicated. (laughs) So I know it's interesting because even for me, I try just with my own personal channels, I just try and post like, here's me making a goofy video of like, um, you know, badly lip syncing to this like <laughs> TikTok sound that I found. Please enjoy. Um, and I, I feel like I've gotten to a point where I'm like, hello, I try not to take myself too seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in saying that, I think that it's about the relationship that you also try and have with the creator and realizing that you can't put expectations on them because they are also human. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a twofold thing, um, which I don't know if all people can do that. So I realize that you're following these individuals and it kind of speaks more to parasocial relationships. So parasocial relationships, these people are not your friends. You're just following them on the internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can say 
Like you can comment on their stuff. You may even develop a personal connection or relationship to them. And that's great. But at the end of the day, um, like you kind of have to create a distance from it at some point um, and realize that if they are like you can you can mute them if you're finding yeah. content that is making you feel unsafe or make putting you into a bad headspace and then yeah. maybe you check back later and you're like oh that content is now changed and I can unmute them yeah so there's different things that you can do to protect yourself um but yeah, it's also about making making and creating those boundaries for yourself. I agree. And those are things that I've also had to do for myself. I hear that. Me, me too. Um, yeah. I know we're probably running tight on time, but I do have one last question. I think it's an important one. Um, I'm sure you've experienced it too. Um, bullying in all its forms is such a big part of any creator's experience. And I would love to hear just briefly from you, you know, what advice you would give somebody who's experiencing bullying on bullying online, what, what you think they should do and, and any advice on how to handle it? Yeah. So, um, I've had to set up, uh, Twitter block lists, mm-hmm. block together lists so that, uh, which has been good and bad, uh, bad in some senses because people have been like you blocked me on twitter and i'm like i never yeah. even added you what are you talking about <laughs> um but it's also protected me because then i'm if there's unsavory characters on twitter they're already already banned and i don't have to worry about it yeah. um i've also added specific blocked words onto my Mm -hmm. Instagram lists so that if people are uh, talking about specific language that I Mm -hmm. don't want on my feeds, it's just automatically blocked and taken care of. Um, And I think even those simple, simple sort of like things that that's not really like that takes care of more trolling rather than bullying. Um, but I think it's still those simple things that you can put into place. Um, because yeah, I've had to, I've had to deal with doxing before I've had like information of mine released on Reddit before, uh, that was not a great 48 hours. Terrifying. Uh, it was terrifying. So, I mean, you sort of become very aware of the th- certain things that you have uh, safety measures that you have to put into place and I really like don't I take my boundaries very seriously when it comes yeah. to like being an online content creator uh you have to. so yeah it's <laughs> bullying is um I kind of keep people at a Mm. A very short distance. Not because I don't want to be nice, but mostly because I enjoy my safety a lot. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you're you're you know, self proclaimed loud and opinionated um person in, and mm-hmm. does that attract more heat from unsavory characters? <laughs> and and you know, like o- obviously some people don't you know you, you you've been around in, in this game for a long time and you, you can cl- clearly deal with it you know but mm-hmm. some people might not want to does that do you think that puts people off like coming mm-hmm. forward who don't fit the mold of traditional instagram beauty or to, I'll, I'll throw instagram under the bus because that's the you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the the one there that but <laughs> does, do you think that keeps people back as well like from from putting themselves up online and being themselves Yeah, I mean, I would say in the however many years that we had Fat Girl Food Squad, um, there was a lot of unsavory characters that attacked us. And there was a lot of um, Reddit channels called like some called our fat people hate uh, our like uh, whale watching that type of thing where they would post our 
blog posts and very innocuous like posts just like this is how you like apply lipstick or this is uh, us going to a restaurant to review the whatever dish or <laughs> like We're very alive. random things um and it was actually on like on our toronto thread where somebody like doxed all of our personal information and then somebody like shared it uh from there into something else so yeah I, it was sort of after that where i'm still quite opinionated but it sort of made me realize that like people uh, on a larger scale um especially when you're an internet creator they they are quite ruthless and mm-hmm. they don't give it they don't give a shit about who you are no. and they don't care about who's on the other end of it so do I still have opinions? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, but I feel like I'm a little more careful in how I share them and what platforms I share them to. So yeah. Twitter is a fucking <laughs> garbage nightmare. <laughs> and I don't share <laughs> nearly as much as I used to on there. Um so I think it's also having a better understanding of the platforms and where where you're sharing certain information to. Um, and so now I feel like my life is a bit more peaceful. The information, <laughs> the opinions are still being shared, still spicy, but like yeah. less trolly, less trolly now. Wow. The amazing thing about that, Emma, is that all you're trying to do is uh, be yourself. <laughs> You're not trying to do anything crazy out here. You're just trying to live your life and be happy. And somehow that's an issue. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's funny how <laughs> I had a piece uh, on, on the walrus at the beginning of the pandemic about, you know, taking uh, would beauty standards change, uh, you know, throughout the pandemic and someone commented about you wow not wearing makeup and like this that and whatever people have not worn makeup even before the pandemic maybe you should just like (laughs) maybe you should have just uh we were just using makeup to cover up your pig face and i was like i was like i mean did, did you read the piece? Because yeah. that's not the take. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> so sometimes you just sort of, when when stuff like that happens, you kind of realize it's an ish, ish them and not an ish you because um, <laughs> they're not even reading. They're just yeah. seeing a headline or they're just yeah. taking one word and they're like, oh, you're fat. Yeah. Gonna attack you now. Yeah. <laughs> So yep. I, now I don't even care. I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. Well, let's, let's finish up on a positive note because we kind of went dark yeah. for a little bit there. Which, <laughs> you know, what's, what's and all. But like, what's the best? Like, what's the best thing about you know being you and creating online and um, you know being? I guess you're at the center of. Well, maybe you know, maybe you might not think so, but you're at the center of you know bo- body positive content online. <laughs> so, what's 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 the best thing about this for you? Honestly, I would say the best thing about all of this is, okay, I have two answers, uh, and they're quick, I promise. Um, but one is the community that it has fostered for me. I have met so many incredible, amazing, smart individuals all, all around the world, and for that, I am truly, honestly grateful because I don't know where I would be right now if not for all of them. So thank you. And my my second uh, answer is that because of all of this writing that I have been able to do, it's brought me a really a lot of great opportunities. So for example, I was able to co-edit a book uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, It was called Fat Studies in Canada, and it was a hybrid between um, the academic 
uh, fat studies and I edited the community section. So I was able to bring in people from all across Canada who were, were like poets and authors and journalists and they could talk about their own individual experiences and I got to curate who all of those individuals were. So I've been given so many incredible, amazing opportunities because people like know that I, this is my, like what I'm so passionate about and they know that I do this work. So mm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful and it's been, it's been an honor. That's brilliant. Um, well, Emma Scriber, thanks so much for hanging out with us. If anyone Thank wants you. to, and they should, just go check out Emma's website, amascriber.com, and all the all the pods she's got high <laughs> high low brow, <laughs> bit different take <laughs> on that. But um, and we'll we'll link all this stuff anyway. But thanks so much, Emma. It's um it's been a pleasure, and like I've you know I'm still learning, and and I've I've learnt even more today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Create the generation. Look on the mic.